Hello, you guys. How are you all today? How are you all on this wonderful night? What a great day, great night it is to be back in the presence of our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, and our personal Messiah and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. Um, the name of this message is entitled, Health is Wealth. Simple title, right? Health is Wealth. Without your health, you will find it difficult to navigate through life with a positive and an upbeat attitude. You'll find that um, without your health, without a sound mind, without a strong mind and a strong body, you will wallow more in your sorrow than you did before you became sick or impotent or without strength or without your good health. As a matter of fact, a bad attitude and a bad disposition, um, negative thoughts, negative emotions bring on certain illnesses, chronic illnesses, brings on diseases. Now, it is said that a negative attitude or negative thoughts, negative emotions do not bring on cancer. It has been said that. But I believe that negative emotions, a negative mindset, negative attitudes, I believe that they can trigger cancer cells right along with stress. See, right along with negative emotions and negative thoughts and a negative attitude, these things bring upon stress. I can even say stress brings upon a negative mindset, negative emotions, and a negative attitude. And these negative emotions or these negative thoughts and this negative attitude brings about compulsive behaviors. You eat uncontrollably, you drink uncontrollably, you smoke uncontrollably. I mean, you gossip uncontrollably. You wallow in your sorrow uncontrollably. And it just leads you down a never ending road of more heartache, more stress, more pain, more chronic illness, more depression, more misery, more discomfort. You understand, we know that life can take a toll on one's mindset, but it doesn't have to if you have the right perspective. Life does not have to alter your, your joy. It doesn't have to alter the way you experience life unless you allow it to, which means that your health doesn't just confine itself to what you eat, what you drink, what you consume. No, your health also entails what you listen to, what you watch who you hang around, places you go to. Your health is closely linked to the people you allow in your life. Your health is your good, or should I say good health? Your health, good or bad, is closely linked to the things that you consume and ingest on a daily basis. If you are watching too much social media or if you are on social media too much, that will impact your health in a negative way. Social media is built to cause you to long after things that you don't need. Social media is built for you to have an insatiable desire for things of the world that Yah does not have in the cards for you, that he doesn't have in his will for you. And what will wind up happening is that if you don't understand that Yah has a purpose plan and he has his will in mind for your life, you will find yourself in pursuit to chasing things that Yah doesn't have in his will for your life. And these things will in turn cause depression, cause stress, misery, disappointments, jealousy, envy, quarrels, contentions, do you understand? Health is wealth. Don't you know that health is your currency? 
So many people spend their lives chasing currency, not even realizing that health is their currency. Health is wealth. Once again, health goes past and goes beyond what you eat and what you drink. No, health is closely linked to or health entails what you listen to, what you watch. Who you listen to, who you watch, the people you hang around, whether they're your relatives, your friends, constituents, co-workers, whoever. Now, the only way to be able to truly offset the things that bombard your mind on a daily basis in terms of this culture and Hollywood and entertainment and social media technology is you have to unplug from it, meaning that you have to take time to disconnect and unplug from the world. That is part of the reasons why you go through an array of emotions. You're depressed all the time. You're up and down. You are confused, frustrated irritated, aggravated, you're double-minded, you're indecisive, you don't know what to do, you don't know what decisions to make, what choices to make, you don't know where to go. And the reason why that is is because you are plugged up, you're plugged in and you're connected too much to the world. You have to learn how to sit down, cut off the TV, cut off the music, cut off your phone and get in y'all's word. I cannot stress that enough. And the reason why you have to do that is because by you connecting to Yah's word, you automatically unplug from a circuit grid system of the world and you get into the spiritual frequency of our heavenly father. You must realize that there, there are two systems. You can even you, you can either stay on the rhythm of this world system, which Satan is in charge of, or you can unplug, you can disconnect from the world system in which Satan's in control of, and you can plug in to Yah. You can plug into his system of blessing. You can plug into his system of timekeeping. You must realize that Yah has all the time in the world. You don't. The world doesn't have all the time in the world, but Yah does. So that means Yah has all the blessings. Anything and everything that you are looking for, searching for, on the quest to obtain and achieve, Yah has it all. The problem is, is that this society and culture has trained us to, to go in accordance to the rhythmic patterns of the world system. And that's the reason why Satan has a world system where he's constantly bombarding you with styles and trends and culture, social media, looks. You see money, cars, jewelry, houses, businesses, all the things of Mystery Babylon. This is what is bombarding and clouding your mind, meaning that you're always on a rush. There's always a rush to get to the next level without you truly enjoying where you already are. Oh, let me help y'all. The reason why you were so anxious and you on edge all the time and you were scared of everything, the reason why you... Why, you know, you, you, you're confused and you're aggravated, you're double-minded, you're sad one day, you're happy the next, you're always going around, up and down on this roller coaster ride is because you stay plugged into the world too much. You stay looking at what other people are doing, whether they're your relatives, whether they're your old classmates, schoolmates, co-workers, you stay bombarded by what everyone else is doing. And what happens is, is that they put pressure on you to try to keep up to their standards. And you don't even know just by looking at these people's lives, you can't tell whether they really doing good or bad. And let me help you. Most of the time they doing bad. That's the reason why they have to Put, put everything on social media, have to project a utopian lifestyle just to get their minds off of the reality of their lives. See, so everyone's living a fairy tale life through social media. That's what social media is for. It's for you to project a fantasy world outside of the reality you're living in to make other people want your life to make other people jealous of your life, to make other people covet your life. And they don't even know. And if you don't have sense enough to know that what you see on social media is false and fake anyway, and is altered, then you will find yourself depressed. You'll find yourself stressed and you'll find yourself rushing to try to keep up with someone else's life, but their, li but their lives, their life will be a facade. 
it will be only to make them feel better about their reality. The problem is, is you don't see their reality. You don't see what's going on behind closed doors in their homes, in their lifestyles. You don't see that. And they won't project that either. Let me, let me, let me go ahead on and give you this. Health is wealth. Health is wealth. That's your currency. Without you having a strong mind and a strong heart, with, first of all, without you having a strong, solid foundation in Yah's word, you'll be lost. You'll always find yourself dancing to the beat of someone else's drum as opposed to being introspective and continuing to seek Yah out for what he has for you. What is his next instruction? What are his instructions for your life? Where does he want you to go? What does he want you to do? What talents and gifts have he given you? What, what skills have you developed that Yah has assisted you in developing along with the gifts and talents he's already given you? How can you max out your years on this earth? How can you max it out? Problem is, is that we're so concentrated on getting to the next level, we never truly max out where we already are. You are already here in the present. Max out your present. Solidify your present. Authenticate your present. Be thankful and grateful for your present. When you are not, you will always find yourself trying to get to the next level, whatever that is, whatever, what, whatever your next level is, whatever you perceive your next level to be, you will always, you will always stay concentrated on getting to the next level without mastering or without maxing out where you already are without even being thankful. Why do you think people, why do you think they are those who continue to chase money? They chase the bag. They check, they chase the next degree. They, they chase the next business deal. They chase the next promotion and they never get an opportunity to enjoy what they've already obtained, what they've already accumulated. They never get an opportunity to just sit back and rest in the finished works of Yahushua. You know why? Because they have a mindset of I'll sleep when I die. It's all about work, 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 grind, 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 grind. And before you know it, you would have missed out on the on the best years of your life where you were strong, where you could have given more of your time, more of your energy, more of your blood, sweat and tears to Yah. And he would have allowed you to enjoy those years without having to always put the pedal to the metal all the time, without having to always grind tooth and nail all the time, only to wind up empty, only to wind up sick, only to wind up taking all these different medications. Then you wind up, see what I'm saying, wallowing in your sorrow, eating yourself to death, drinking yourself to death, smoking yourself away. You see what I mean? And this is the reason why you have to disconnect and unplug from the world. Why? It's for your health. But not only for your mental health, emotional health, physical health, it's for your spiritual health. Don't forget the spiritual health. Your spiritual health is more important than any other aspects of your health. Because spiritually, if your spiritual health is intact, everything else would be intact. Everything else would be intact. We miss out on the spiritual part. But wait a minute, it's spiritually in our Heavenly Father. Because spirits are neutral, just like faith is neutral. Faith is neutral, meaning you can have faith in anything. You can have faith in your job, faith in your money, faith in yourself, faith in your strength, Faith in your beauty, faith in how handsome you are, faith in your degrees, faith in everything, right? Faith in your friends. Faith is neutral. So it's not just having faith, it's whom your faith is rooted in. Oh, let me help y'all. Um, just like spiritually, spirits, there are spirits everywhere. So when someone says that they're spiritual, okay, no, you got to get deeper. You have to elucidate. You have to elaborate on spirituality because demons are spiritual. Do you understand? So it's not just being spiritual. It's having a spiritual connection with the one who created you, with the one who made you, with the one who orchestrated you, manufactured you. Come on. 
And you can only have that relationship with our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, only by connecting, receiving, and accepting Yahushua HaMashiach, whom is the begotten son, the only begotten son of our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah. You have to go through Yahushua HaMashiach. You have to go through the gate. You got to go through the door in order to get to our Heavenly Father. You know, but everyone is, go before I even go any further, go to Sirach. This is part of the lost books, part of the Apocrypha. Go to Ecclesiasticus or go to Sirach. Go to Sirach. S-I-R-A-C-H 30. Go to Sirach chapter 30. Go there. Sirach chapter 30. Get your iPads out. Get your, if you're sitting in front of your desktop, wherever you are, get your iPads, get your, you know, get your, um, your laptops out. Get your scripture out. So get, get, and you, yeah, get, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sirach, Sirach chapter 30. Some of y'all might not have Bibles with the Apocrypha. If you have a Bible with the Apocrypha, the hidden books, the lost books, you could use that. If not, um, go on Google and type in Sirach, Sirach chapter 30. Sirach chapter 30, Sirach chapter 30. Sirach chapter 30. Um, let me, let, let me, let me help y'all. Cause I got to get into, um, this, this thing. Uh, Sirach chapter 30. Sirach chapter 30. And then go to, um, and then go to verses 14, go to verse 14, go to verse 14. Yes, but you need to learn how to enjoy where you are. Just like apostle Paul put it, he says, listen, he knows how to be content in whatever state he's in. He knows how to abase and he knows how to abound. In other words, he knows how to suffer need and he knows how to have plenty. You have to learn how to be content in both situations. Now, your spiritual health will determine how you respond in times of adversity. Your spiritual health will determine how you respond in times of adversity. If your spiritual health is low, you will not respond correctly in times of adversity. You won't, you won't respond correctly. You'll be responding from this flesh. You won't have Yah's word to be able to combat life's ills and life's woes. Need you to understand that. But we live in a system where Satan has created many fronts in his system to attack and hack at the scriptures. The Bible is under attack. Yah's unadulterated word, his, his inerrant, infallible, unadulterated word is under attack by the world system. So then that means that if you are connected to the world, you are connected to a system, to a force that is directly in opposition to our Heavenly Father. And that's the reason why your spiritual health is low. But your spiritual health is vital and crucial to everything that you do. How you react, how you respond. How you go through trials and tribulations. So then that means that you need to realize that Yah's in control. That's part of that's part of nourishing and nurturing your spiritual health. It's nourishing and nurturing your spiritual health. Part of that mindset is understanding, acknowledging, and knowing that Yah's in control. Knowing that. 
without your spiritual health being intact, you will not have that understanding. You will always try to find ways to change and alter your reality, not realizing that before anything in your reality can be changed, altered, or redirected, you must first get instructions and you must first be led by the set apart spirit. That, I mean, that's a must because otherwise you'll be looking for all these outward things to try to change what's on the inside. <laughs> See, you'll be feeling sad, feeling depressed, feeling disturbed, aggravated, agitated. You'll be double minded and confused, but you'll be looking for sex. You'll be looking for promiscuity in your sexual quest, on your sexual quest to try to change what's on the inside. You'll look for more money, a better promotion, a better job. You'll be looking for another car. You'll be looking for another sex partner. You'll be looking for food, for drink. You'll be looking for pills and smoke. You'll be looking for these things to try to change the inside. And these things will only serve to make you worse. Okay, Sirach chapter 30, because I want to be diligent with this. Listen to this. Sirach chapter 30, verses 14. Now, I've seen someone come on here automatically miscalculating or misjudging, prejudging this teaching. Obviously, they are not um, well familiar with the Davis ministry, saying don't make this a message about prosperity. Yah is not against prosperity. He's against you teaching prosperity over the good news. He's against you idolizing prosperity. And then whoever that was that said what they said, they got the cross up there. So they already breaking the second commandment. You shall have no graven image in the heavens above in the earth beneath and the waters below. So they already breaking the second commandment, trying to come on my life, telling me what not to preach. See, so this is the reason why, listen, y'all, let me go on. Let me just go on. Let me go on. Listen to this. Sirach chapter 30, verses 14. It is better to be poor. See, this ain't got nothing to do with prosperity. See, starting off, it is better to be poor. See, this is the reason why don't jump the gun. All in the Kool-Aid and don't know the flavor. It is better to be poor, but strong and healthy than to be rich, but poor in health. Let me help you. That's, remember I told y'all, your health is your currency. That's your wealth right there. Without your health, without you being able to move, your limbs, move, your hands, your fingers, your feet, your toes, without you being able to walk, without you being able to run, without you being able to talk, without you being able to write, without you being able to make any type of physical movement, without your vital organs being intact so that you can move around and move around with vibrance. And without that, it doesn't matter how much money you make. Do you know that there are millionaires right now confined to a wheelchair, eating out of a tube? Somebody have to dress them. Somebody always, somebody has to brush their teeth every day. Somebody has to get them in the bathtub, wash them, clean them, put their clothes on, wipe their butt. Do y'all, you understand what I'm saying? It is better to be poor, but strong and healthy. And even in a situation where you are poor, but yet strong and healthy, you still need a mindset that is in accordance to how y'all thinks so that you can have a you can have a, a, a good perspective on your situation. It is better to be poor, but strong and healthy. You know why? Because with your good health and your strength, you can come out of poverty. Oh, y'all ain't y'all. Y'all y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you could be poor. But if you're strong and healthy, you can come out of your impoverished or your impoverished condition. See, it is better to be poor, but strong and healthy. Than to be rich, but poor in health. And then not to mention, people are probably taking advantage of your finances around you because you can't move. You can't walk. You can't. You can barely talk, barely think, barely remember anything. So you can't even say whether those 
who are around you have your best interest at heart or not. You don't know. You know, wealthy people, they get beat out of their money all the time because they cannot take care of their own affairs. They need someone. They need caretakers. They need someone else to help them out and to take care of their affairs for them. See, so it doesn't wealth doesn't mean anything if you don't have your health, which is really the wealth. Why do you think the pharmaceutical companies, why do you think they're trying so hard to to poison us with this medication? Why do you think? Why do you think they strip everything that deals with natural herbs and how to how to cure yourself from the earth? Why do you think they're doing that? Because they do not want those. They do not want you healthy. They don't want you vibrant. They don't want you strong. They don't want you to be able to think critically and analytically. No, they want you to be sick. They want you to be lethargic. They want you to be fatigued, low energy. They want everything. You see, and it is better to be poor, but strong in health than to be rich, but poor in health. OK. Because you want me to tell you why you can be wealthy, you can have a lot of money, but there will be nothing that your money can do to change the condition of your illness. Yeah, money can't buy good health. Not if you're already sick. Not if you're already burdened down and laden with sicknesses, affirmities and illnesses, chronic illnesses. Money can't do anything about that. Money can't help that. But listen to this. Verse 15, a sound, healthy body and a cheerful attitude, a sound, healthy body and a cheerful attitude are more valuable than gold and jewels. See, a sound, healthy body and a cheerful attitude are more valuable than gold and jewels. A healthy body, meaning you need to stop eating so much. Get up off the couch. Get out of that bed. Do some sit-ups, do some push-ups, go run, lift some weights, do some pull-ups, do some sit-ups. Get yourself active, get yourself moving. Drink water. Eat a well-balanced diet. Stop eating junk food all the time. Cupcakes and donuts, Twinkies and oatmeal pies and cheese curls and chips and stop eating that stuff all the time because you're clogging up your system. You're clogging up, you're messing up your digestive system and then you are clogging up your arteries by eating all of this stuff with high cholesterol and saturated fats and all of that. Stop doing, run. That's part of the reason why you can't think clear. You can't think clearly. You can't think quickly. You can't remember anything. You can barely get up. You have arthritis messing with you all the time. Why is that? Your bones are deteriorating. Your muscle mass is deteriorating. Why is that? Because you don't take care of your body. You don't take care of your temple. That's the reason why. Which plays a very profound effect on the way you think. That's why you think the way you think. That's why you're always sad and you're moody and you're depressed all the time. Why is that? Because you don't take care of your body. What you put in your body has to come out. What you put in your body reflects on the outside. What you put in your body must come out. But before what you put in your body comes out, it has to disrupt your vital organs first. It has to disrupt your mind. It has to disrupt your mental clarity. It has to disrupt your liver, your lungs, your heart. It has to disrupt your arteries. It has to disrupt your blood and your white cells, your, wh your white and red blood cells. It has to disrupt all of these things. See, so don't think it's just about putting something in your body, consuming or ingesting something and it coming out. No, it has to wreak havoc first or it has to or it has to vitally Give your body the nutrients so that you can perform at an optimal level. 
So whatever you put in your body, it has to either hurt you or it has to help you before it comes out. And this is the reason why most people are going through what they're going through. But it's not just what you eat. It's not just what you drink. What are you reading? What are you watching? See, you're always watching Love and Hip Hop and Atlanta Housewives and you're always watching football, basketball, watching what the stars are doing. And that's the reason why you do not have good spiritual health. That's the reason. Listen, that's the reason why you can't think correctly, because you have the thoughts of those in Hollywood who are leading you astray based upon the mind controlling propaganda machine of the media. And that's the reason why you can't think outside of the world system. You can't you can't think past the culture. You can't think past styles and trends and keeping up with the Joneses and keeping up with the Kardashians. You can't think past that. Why? Because that's what your daily nutritional substance that, that that's what it consists of it consists of hollywood and what the stars are doing and and that's the reason why you can't move forward with a positive attitude you can't move forward with your spiritual health intact you can't move forward with your emotions intact because the world then pulled your heartstrings toward what they doing And next thing you know, you depressed because you don't look like a supermodel. You depressed because you don't have the muscles of an athlete. You depressed because you don't have the cars that they drive, not knowing that everything they driving is rented. You don't even know that they they don't own anything that they have for the moment only to deceive you into thinking that they own this stuff, but it's making you want it even more. But you don't realize that these people have to, they rent their lifestyles in order to appease the you to make you want it. You have to realize that Satan has given your, your idols, your Hollywood superstars, your athletes, models, singers, rappers, whoever they are, they have given, Satan has given them the toys, his, his devices of the world to lead you astray, to make you long for things, to make you wish you had an easier life, a better life, a more prosperous life, your best life. And you don't even know that these superstars, these entertainers, you, these actors and actresses, models, athletes, rappers and singers, you don't even know they're miserable. Why? Because their spiritual health is not intact. Spiritually, they are being haunted by demons. Spiritually, they are obsessed, possessed and oppressed by demons spiritually. So you can see that their spiritual health is the, or their spiritual health has no nutritional value to it. They are being used by demons. So they're miserable in their position in the world system, in Hollywood. But you don't see that. And the reason why you don't see that is because your spiritual health is low. See, if your spiritual health was was nutritional, if your spiritual health, right, was, was on point in ya, if your spiritual health had a full bar, then you would be able to see behind what they project to you to make you want what they have. But you can't see past the attractions of the world because your spiritual health is low. And your spiritual health is low because you stay connected to the world. And the world is draining your spiritual health. The world is blinding you from seeing that everything that's being shown to you is a facade. It's deceptive. They're lies. It's falsehood. There's darkness. You can't see that. So you want everything you see, not knowing that these people are not enjoying what you see. Let me, let me help y'all. Of verse 15, a sound, healthy body and a cheerful attitude are more valuable than gold and jewels. Let me help you. Now, these people in the Hollywood entertainment business, what do you see and wear? Gold and jewels. 
Gold jewels, furs, purses, hats, shoes, boots, coats. Now, why are they wearing all that stuff and why are they glowing? Why is it all about the bling bling? Why are they glittering and why are they shining? Why, why is that? Because Satan has to deceive you. So in order for Satan to deceive you, he's got to get you caught up on how things look, how bright things are. The high life and the highlights and the twilights, he has to get you caught up into that so that you can't see past it. And the reason why you can't see past it is because your spiritual health is low. <laughs> you get it? So that's the reason why they wear the gold and the jewels. Don't you, you don't notice that? You don't notice that every rapper you see always have to have a big chain on, all these rings, big chains, big rings, anklets, chains, earrings, nose rings, earrings. You see, why is that? It's to make you want what you see without having the spiritual health that you need to have discernment to see behind the gold and the jewels. See? A sound, healthy body. Now, a sound, healthy body is not just confined to your muscle mass. A sound, healthy body is not just a big butt, breast, forearms, biceps, triceps, strong legs, strong calves. No. Listen, a healthy body includes your mind. A healthy body includes your brain. Being able to think. Use critical thinking, common sense, wisdom, which comes from the Most High Yah. Verse 15, a sound, healthy body and a cheerful attitude are more valuable than gold and jewels. See, a lot of these people don't even have healthy bodies and a cheerful attitude. Most of them have nasty attitudes. They have evil, demonic, nasty attitudes from working all the time, from sun up to sundown, they always have to put on another face. They always have to put on another character to play this next character in this movie. See this now, now this is the reason why, this is the reason why you are so caught up in what they doing and how they look because they play different characters. And these different characters that these actors and actresses play, they play on your psyche. They play on your emotional health and mental health. So you get so caught up in how they're being treated in the movie. You get so caught on or caught up in, you see, the sinister roles that they're playing. And then you start to hate them outside the or off the screen and you don't even know these people. And they didn't pull your heartstrings because of the role that they played in the movie, uh, y'all. And no, they don't have a cheerful attitude because they've had, they've had to channel so many demons to play these different parts. No, they don't have that. They don't have a cheerful attitude. And they slaving out for the money they getting to play these different characters. And so these characters that these actors and actresses are playing, these characters are none other than demons that they channel. But the money that they make doesn't reflect how many times and to what degree they had to channel these demons only to project something to you to make you want what they have. When in reality, they don't have anything. Okay. Now, and that goes right along with your relatives and your friends. See, you so caught up on what your relatives have and what your classmates and schoolmates have and all the fun they have and all the pictures they taking and all the nice shoes they have, new cars, new homes. You don't even realize these people are working for Satan to have all this stuff. These people that sold out. Don't think that selling your soul is only confined to those in Hollywood. No, you can sell your soul in everyday living. You can sell your soul just by being an average everyday Joe Blow. <laughs> Working for the system. Do y'all you, you, understand that? Verse 15, a sound, healthy body and a cheerful attitude are more valuable than gold and jewels. Verse 16, nothing can make you richer or give you greater happiness than those two things. What two? Healthy body. A healthy body and a cheerful attitude. Nothing can make you richer or give you greater happiness than a healthy body and a cheerful attitude. A healthy body, cheerful attitude. Those ought to be what you chase after. 
you ought to be on a quest to obtaining a healthy body and a cheerful attitude. Because without those two things, you could forget everything else. See? Nothing can make you richer or give you greater happiness than those two things. So if you want to be rich and you want to be happy, a healthy body and a cheerful attitude. Okay. Verse 17. It would be better to be dead, asleep forever, than to live in the misery of chronic illness. There's nothing worse than always walking around in pain. You walk around in constant pain all the time. You can't enjoy life. Your quality of life is low. Your quality of life is really not even existing. You, you have a non-existent high quality of life. So it would be better to be dead, asleep forever, than to live in the misery of chronic illness. Now, the scripture says to choose life, right? So even in chronic illness, you still have to choose life. But then your quality of life in this physical, natural realm won't even be worth holding on to because you can't really enjoy it. Then you really have to live in accordance to the set of our spirit. Then you really you understand. But then you have to look at the things that you've done. You have to look at the lifestyle that you have led that have put you in that position. What did your lifestyle consist of when you were in your teenage years, in your 20s, your 30s, and your 40s? What did your lifestyle and your daily routine consist of? What did you consume spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically? What did you consume? You have to watch that. Watch the people you hang around. Even 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I believe. 33 says, do not be, do not be, um, do not be deceived for bad company corrupts good morals. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. That deals with your spiritual health. That right there alone deals with your spiritual health. The reason why you deceived all the time, the reason why you're tired all the time, look at the people you hang around. The reason why you're jealous and you're angry all the time, jealous, angry, envious. Why? Look at the people you hang around. Well, look at the people you hang around. See, first Corinthians chapter 15, verses 33. That's what scripture that is. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Don't be deceived. <laughs> Problem is you deceived. Don't you know that two wep there are two weapons that Satan has in his arsenal that he uses consistently. And these are his best weapons. Deception and fear. Those are his two weapons. The one I would like to believe that he uses the most is deception. Because <laughs> the whole world has been deceived. And so most people are deceived. Because they and and the and the deception that they're under disallows them from seeing the people that they hang around are bad company. Bad company. Deals with your spiritual health now. And let me help you. Bad company, they don't offer you anything that is vital to your spiritual health without Heavenly Father. They may offer you some other stuff that will keep you oppressed, obsessed, and possessed by demons. But when you deal with bad company, they do nothing to help you grow 
in the set apart spirit of our heavenly father. So what is happening? What's happening to you? Your spiritual health is declining. You were drained spiritually as it relates to being connected to our heavenly father. Why? Bad company. They corrupt morals. They have you doing things you would not have done had you not been around them. Bad company makes you hate the things of Yah. Bad company causes you to love the world more than you love our heavenly father. Bad company. But because you operate in the flesh all the time, you think these people love you. You look at how much fun you have with these people. But because your spiritual health is not optimal, you can't even see behind the smiles and the laughs and the good time and the football games and the drinking and the going out. You can't see past that. Why? Because spiritually in our Heavenly Father, you are drained. The, listen, Satan's main job, Satan's main job is to keep you away from the scriptures. Out of everything you do, look at your life, evaluate your life. Look at everything that you do. Look at your routine. Look at everything that you consume. Look at your daily nutrition. Look at your daily diet. Look at you. Just look at your daily diet. Look at what you ingest and consume mentally, emotionally, physically and spiritually. And then see whether the scripture is in your daily diet. For most people, the scripture is nowhere near being a part of their daily diet. Without that, you have no way of knowing how far you are away from our Heavenly Father. That's the reason why most people think they highly favored and they blessed and God's blessing me. They don't pray. They don't read the scripture. They don't obey him, but they blessed by him. But the reason why they think they blessed, the reason why they think they highly favored is because Satan has deceived them into making them think they highly favored and blessed. And the reason why they're deceived is because their spiritual health has declined. They have no, they have no light to be able to see they're being deceived. This is, this is critical. So look at the way the world is going. Look at the road. Look at, look at the path the, the, the world is going down. This is called critical mass. Critical mass is what the world is under right now. In other words, the world thinks one thing. It's when the world chases the culture, chases styles, chases the trends. They chase whatever, what, whatever's being projected to them. That is how they shape their worldview. Their worldview is shaped by who's rapping now. Who's the, who are the new rappers out? Who are the new entertainers, the new actors, the new actresses? Your commercials. What are they selling you? What are they projecting to you? When the whole world is going in one direction, let me help you. Critical mass. The whole world celebrates Christmas. Critical mass. The whole world celebrates birthdays. As a matter of fact, there are birthday shindigs and extravaganzas. And I mean, people have birthdays. They celebrate birthdays so much. They make their one day a whole week, a whole month of sinning, turning up. Doing everything in opposition to our Heavenly Father, yet they say they're blessed by our Heavenly Father. But everything they did on their birthday and the whole week, they didn't, they didn't did in accordance to Satan. But yet they say the Heavenly Father blessed them. That's critical mass. Critical mass is doing everything the world is doing. Without you saying you're going down the same road as the world. <laughs> That's critical mass. Do you understand that? And so what the world has to do, what most of the world is doing, what are they? They are using all of their achievements. They are using all of what they have built up 
in terms of their coping mechanisms to hide the fact that they are not satisfied with their lives. That's what they've done. See, people are using everything that has caused them to be disconnected from Yah as their God. That's the problem. Instead of connecting to our Heavenly Father, they use money. They use their degrees. They use their looks. They use all of that. They put all of that in front of them before our Heavenly Father. When our Heavenly Father says that you shall have no other Elohim before me, but yet they put in everything before Elohim and they are using everything that serves their entertainment right in front of them before Yah. So this is what becomes people's gods. And then they can't see the reason why they, they sad and they depressed and they, they tired and, and it's a constant thing. And I'm not saying that I'm not saying that walking with the Heavenly Father, you won't get tired. But what I'm saying is that we know how to connect to him and we know how to quickly come out of that. That that feeling and that condition or that position of being drained and feeling down and feeling depressed. We don't wallow in our sorrow. Let me help you. We don't stay there. We don't wallow in our sorrow and we don't use coping mechanisms that only cater to our flesh to help us get over only what y'all can help us get over. Why do you think people, why do you think people can't get married? They can't stay married. Why? Because instead of just buckling down, turning down and getting in y'all, they go get another sex partner. That's why you have 40 and 50 and 60 year old men and women that can't get married, but they got all these souls that they done harbored as sexual soul ties and they still can't get their lives together. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? They have money. They got cars. They got, they, they got houses. They got degrees, but they still out here having sex like dogs and rabbits like they in high school. Come on, y'all. And the reason why they can't get married, the reason why they either can't get married or, or stay in their state of chastity is because they see they have people are still dealing with trauma. People are still dealing with heartbreak, trauma, all the stuff they never healed from. And they are using new bodies to try to soak up and to help them alleviate all of their pain and trauma. But these people that they bring aboard in their lives constantly add on to their pain and their trauma. So they never get over the pain and the trauma that that came upon them initially. And the reason why that is, is because the more people they bring in their lives only add to their pain and trauma. So their pain and trauma is amplified. You get it? Isn't this your, isn't this your 50th? Sexual partner, your 20th and your 50th sexual partner. Come on. And they can't see why they moody and cranky and depressed and sad. And they, they, they just can't, they can't trust anybody, have trust issues. Why? No, no wonder why you can't trust people. See. Now, let me help you. Do you know why people go through people to try to find happiness? They looking for a savior. The reason why women go through men is because they looking for somebody to save them. I mean, y'all ain't. They looking for somebody to save their heart, to save their mind, to save their position in life. Because they're getting ready or they're on the verge of losing everything. And so they need somebody to come and save them. But they're never going to the Savior. They're never going to our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah. They're never going to our Hebrew Messiah and Savior, Yahushua Mashiach. They're never going to the Word to see what Yah says about their lives. They're always looking at, they're always looking at a movie. Always looking at a sitcom, a TV show, always looking at a movie, always listening to music. They're always looking at interviews by these celebrities, and that's the reason why they never have answers. 
Spiritual health now. Health is wealth. Health is wealth. Hold on, let me get back. Here we go. Verse uh, 17. Sirach chapter 30, verse 17. It would be better to be dead, asleep forever, than to live in the misery of chronic illness. Okay? Your chronic illnesses are coming from the fact that you're always angry. Don't you know that anger, harboring a lot of anger, don't you know that that raises your blood pressure? Harboring anger all the time. That's why your blood pressure is so high. And then you eating everything under the sun. All you eat is fast food. That's all you eat. Because you're too lazy to cook. You're too lazy to cook. you a well-balanced nutrition, a nutritional meal. See? So you sit in front of that idiot box with fast food, harboring all these sexual soul ties. And that's the reason why you can't get your life together. And you fronting on social media. Making people think you got it together. See? That's, now listen. So And, and so that, uh, these chronic illnesses come from the fact that you don't have your spiritual health intact with our Heavenly Father. That's where these chronic illnesses are coming from. Again, that doesn't mean that you being in Yah, you won't get sick. That doesn't mean that because you can be afflicted. You can be tested by sickness. But I'm talking about chronic illnesses that you do not have to have. I mean, why your blood sugar always high? Why you have high blood pressure all the time? You, you understand why you always hurting? Achy bones. Why is something always wrong with you all the time? See? Watch what you eat. Watch what you drink. See, if you were in the word more, you wouldn't be eating and drinking all the time. The, pro the reason why you eating and drinking everything is because you are looking for something to help you cope with your reality. Do you understand that? And along with the bad food, along with the sugary beverages, you ingest this Hollywood social media foolishness, which is exacerbating the declination of your spiritual health. See? Now, that's why verse 17 says, Sirach chapter 30, verse 17 says, it would be better to be dead, asleep forever, than to live in the misery of chronic illness. Chronic illness you created. Chronic illness you brought about. See? Years and years of staying out late at night drinking. Years and years of eating that pork. Years and years of eating things high in cholesterol, saturated fats, high in sugar, high in high fructose, corn syrup, MSG, GMOs. See? And this stuff didn't caught up with you. But the reason why you were living off the chain and living off the hook and living wild like that in your 20s, 30s, and 40s was because you were trying to numb the pain of your childhood. You were trying to keep up with those around you, numbing your pain at the same time. And because you never learned self-discipline, these bad habits, these bad destructive habits, these bad destructive eating habits, these bad destructive habits of watching foolishness and worldly entertainment done followed you right on in to your 30s, 40s, and 50s. And now you can't shake it. Now you can't shake it. Now you're used to it. You can't come away from it. As a matter of fact, these same habits that you cultivated and nourished and nurtured over the years, they will kill you before you ever get rid of them. As a matter of fact, you done built a comfort zone in your sickness. <laughs> you done built a comfort zone in your illness. 
You done normalized affirmities, illnesses, chronic illnesses, sicknesses. You have normalized it. So in other words, you feel like you didn't came too far now to change. So you'd rather die in your chronic illness than change your diet, change what you're watching, change what you're listening to, change what you eat, change what you drink to live a, a better, healthier lifestyle and have a more optimal spiritual life. Instead of you doing that, you'd rather die in your sickness and die in your illness. Now, those who were born with illnesses, I'm not talking to y'all. Now, those who were born with illnesses, I'm not really dealing with y'all if you were born with certain things. But I do know if you were born with certain illnesses, there are things that you can eat and ingest, things that you can drink that will exacerbate the illnesses you were born with. So, yes, you may have been born with these things, but there are things that you can add on that can worsen and exacerbate your condition, the condition you were born with. So if you know you have these underlying health conditions, conditions you were born with, well, then you need to eat a diet. You need to eat whatever illness you have, a friendly diet. You need to eat a friendly diet in accordance to the illness you were born with. That's what you need to do. Adopt a friendly, healthy diet in accordance to the illnesses you were already born with. See? Um, listen to this. Verse 18, the finest food means nothing if you are too sick to eat it. It might as well be offered to an idol. You know, an idol can't hear, can't smell, can't eat, can't think, can't walk. Well, guess what? If you're too sick, you see, if, 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 if you're too sick to eat the finest of the foods, you're not going to be able to enjoy it. It might as well be given to an idol. They can't eat, can't smell, can't talk, can't walk, can't do anything. See? Verse 18, the finest food means nothing if you were too sick to eat it. It might as well be offered to an idol. Verse 19, but there is no point in offering food to an idol. It can't eat or smell. It can't eat it or smell it. It is just the same with someone who, whom Yahuwah has afflicted. Yes, right. It is just the same with, the, with someone whom Yahuwah has afflicted. Remember, I just told y'all illnesses can come by way of Yah inf afflicting you. Yah can afflict you with an illness. Or I'll plain say Yah will allow you to be afflicted by, by an illness. Because you must realize, let me help you. Don't you know that if you continue to push the envelope on certain things, don't you know that Yah will give you over to what you love? Y'all will give you over to what you desire. Y'all will give you over to what you crave. Y'all will give you over to what you lust, which will in then, which will in turn create the affliction or the illness. Why? Because he gave he gave you over to what you wanted. And that created the affliction. Now, the affliction came to show you that what you wanted, you didn't really want. <laughs> See, that's the reason why he'll test you with an uh, he will test you with an affliction. Cause now he wants to see how you're going to respond to the uh, he wants to see how you're going to respond to the affliction after he's given you over to everything you wanted. Almost to say, well, guess what? You were living good. You had a good attitude about the things that I gave you over to because you wanted them so bad. Okay, now have that same good attitude about the affliction. Because now I'm testing to see how you're going to respond to the affliction. Okay. Verse 18, the finest food means nothing if you were too sick to eat it. Might as well be offered to an idol. Verse 19, but there is no point in offering food to an idol. It can't eat it or smell it. It is just the same with someone who, whom Yahuwah has afflicted. Verse 20, he looks at his food and sighs. Like a castrated man hugging a young woman. You know, a castrated man hugging a young woman ain't nothing he can do with the young woman. He's castrated. But that doesn't mean that 
he doesn't have emotions to want to do something with the young woman, but he can't do it because <laughs> he's castrated. Well, it's the same thing if you are sick, afflicted with an illness, and you have the finest of food sitting before you and you can't eat it. Let's see. All right, verse 21. I'm almost done. Verse 21. Don't deliberately torture yourself by giving in to depression. You torture yourself when you give in to your sickness, when you give in to your mental. I don't even say it's a mental illness, y'all. I say these are demons. These are demons attacking people, obsessing people. But don't deliberately torture yourself by giving in to depression. In other words, don't sit there and say, you know, I'm sad and depressed and I ain't never going to be nothing. I'm never going to be prosperous and I'm never going to mount up amount to anything. And, you know, you give in to depression by drinking yourself to an oblivion, by blacking out. You eat yourself to death. That's gluttony. You gorge, you, you, you engorge yourself and stuff yourself with all this food. You're giving in to depression. Why? You're a comfort eater. See, you're eating to comfort yourself, but that's you giving in to depression. See? You pop pills and you drink all this alcohol, don't even know you're messing up your kidney and your livers. What are you doing? You're giving in to depression. You want people to side with you based on the things you've used to create the afflictions in the first place. That's a sickness in itself. You want people to come and side with you and be miserable right along with you because of something you created. You created your own sickness, but now you want people to feel sorry for you, but you created this. All right. You know the saying, hurt people, hurt people. Sick people will create sick people. Notice how sick people want people who are healthy to deal with their sickness. Yet the sick people never admit to what made them sick. They never admit that they created their own sickness and they turn healthy people sick. That's a sickness. And the reason why they sick, part of the reason why they sick is because they have not yet. They have not yet given their lives to Yah. They have not totally submitted and surrendered their lives, lives to Yah. That's the problem. And so everything that they have used as coping mechanisms and turn up and entertainment to cover and hide and live behind their reality, that is what they have used as their savior. Okay, let me put it to you this way. In between mankind and our Heavenly Father, there's a pit. There's a pit. In other words, as man goes forward, mankind, man and woman, as men and women, as mankind moves forward in their lives, on their journey, the only thing they have in front of them before them is a pit. Meaning the only place they have to go is to hell. That's it. Before they ever get to our Heavenly Father, they have hell first. What happens to mankind is that he allows his reality to get to him, meaning that he allows his reality to get to him so much that he puts stuff in the pit. He puts money, he puts sex, he puts drugs, he puts alcohol, he puts titles, degrees, control, position, influence, and platform. He puts that in the middle. Now, why does he do that? He puts, why does mankind have a proclivity to put these things in the middle? He puts these things in the middle to try to cover up and to hide him and to try to keep him from dealing with reality. 
So then the money he looks at as his savior, the turn up, he looks at as his savior, the drugs, the alcohol, he looks at, she looks at as their savior. The degrees, the intelligence, the intellect, they look at as their savior. The turn up, the technology, the social media, they look at as a savior. So instead of these things bringing them to Yah, they're keeping them going to the pit. <laughs> you get it? But what they need in the middle is they need Yahushua HaMashiach. So they're going forward to our Heavenly Father, they don't go in the pit. Mashiach is in the middle to keep them from dropping down and falling in the pit. Mashiach is the bridge. Yahushua HaMashiach, our true Hebrew Messiah and Savior, he is the bridge between mankind and our Heavenly Father, which means the only way you can have a relationship with our Heavenly Father is go through the bridge. You got to go through the gate. You got to go through Yahushua HaMashiach. Yahushua HaMashiach bridges the gap between man and our Heavenly Father. That way you can get to our Heavenly Father. When you don't have Yahushua HaMashiach as the mediator, all you have is the pit, meaning all you have is the lake of fire. All you have is hell. But mankind, because he spends most of his life running away from our Messiah, he puts all these things in place of our Messiah. He puts the money in place of our Messiah. He puts drugs and alcohol, another sex partner in place of our Messiah. But these things still keep him going to the pit. But before these things sent him to the pit, the newness and the euphoria and the feel good wears off of these things that man has put in the middle to try to make him not focus on his reality. Y'all understand that? Verse 21, don't deliberately torture yourself by giving in to depression. Verse 22, happiness makes for a long life and makes it worth living. Now, sometimes happiness making for a long life doesn't always mean long in years. It just means a long, full life and however long you live. You get it? So even... In a short life, in a short amount of time, you would have lived a long, full life because you maxed out the years that Yah has given you by living for him. So when you max out your years in living for our Heavenly Father, you ain't got time to give in to depression, now do you? You ain't got time to give in to the fact that you don't have what you see these Hollywood superstars have. You are content with your life. You're not always rushing to get to the next level. You are content with where you are. You want to max out and you want to. You want to be productive where you are. You want to make sure. That you live in your present. You want to make sure of that. So. By you making sure that you live in the present and you max out what y'all has given you in the present. You steer clear from always wanting to get to the next level so quick because you don't even get to see all of the things in your present. In other words, you don't get to experience all that your present offers you. You don't get to experience the highs and the lows and the lessons and 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 all that y'all has for you to enjoy. It, see, it's the journey. So if that means that if you always rushing to get to the next level, rushing to get to the next place, then you never enjoy the journey. You never get the rest in y'all's finished works because you always looking for the next degree, the next promotion, more money, more businesses. And that's the reason why people never enjoy their lives because they work so much to try to keep what they have, but they never enjoy what they already have because they working so much to try to keep it. Instead of just saying, let me enjoy where I am, work less, give my life and give my time, give my blood, sweat and tears to the most high and rest in the finished works, which means that I'll, my faith will always be out in front of my works. Let me help y'all. Problem is people, mankind has his works out in front of his faith in Yah. Man doesn't have faith in Yah. So that means that he has to work more. He has to work harder and he has to work more and work longer. He has to work more, work longer, work harder. Why? Because he don't have faith in Yah. 
Man feels like mankind feels like he has to do everything on his own. With that mindset, you wear yourself out quicker. With that mindset, this is how depression comes in. This is how you do become miserable because you feel like you're going to miss something if you don't get all this money. You feel like you're going to miss something if you don't keep up with the culture. You feel like you're going to miss something if you don't keep up with all the people you have around you are doing. So it puts pressure on you to have to make all this money and make it real quick and make it in a short amount of time and do what they're doing. And you're trying to beat people to the punch. You're trying to be the first to do everything. And it's putting more pressure on you, in turn, creating stress, making you sick. Come on, y'all. Then guess what? You die without ever repenting. You die without ever getting in y'all's word. You die without ever knowing him. And now when you get in front of him, he's going to say, I never knew you. <laughs> and you guess where you going? See? And none of the stuff that you chased came with you. A U-Haul doesn't follow behind the hearse. Let me help. Y'all better get what I'm saying. But you didn't chase your whole life. Chased all these things. Chase the money, chase the cars, chase the men and the women. You didn't chase everything that you thought was serving you. In turn, you serve Satan. And now you're dead. Now you're gone. Now judgment on the other side. Now you got to stand before Yah and you can't account for nothing. Come on. And then when you was here, you never got you never got to truly rest while you was here. And then you're going to get on the other side and not rest there. You get it? So you was never able to rest in your natural physical life, chasing this life. And then when you die, get on the other side, you still ain't going to rest because you're going to be in the lake of fire forever burning. So you still ain't going to rest. You have a never ending toil. You have a never ending working. Your work never stops. See? Don't you know the freedom that you get in living for our Heavenly Father? The freedom you get is freedom from keeping up with the world. I need y'all to get this. If you don't get anything from this message tonight, understand your freedom in our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah. And in our Messiah, Hebrew Messiah and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach, the freedom you get is the freedom from the pressures of this world. That's the freedom you get. You don't have to keep up with anyone. Why? Because your spiritual life is so... Your, listen, your spiritual battery is so full on a hundred until... You can see, you can see past what someone who doesn't have the set apart spirit sees. Okay, let me help you. Someone who doesn't have the eyes of Yah, they can only see 15, 20 years. You see eternity. So you see past the 20 years in this carnal life based upon someone's physical eyes. No, the set apart spirit allows you to see eternity while they are only stuck in this system seeing 20 years. So you need to realize that, understand that your freedom in Yah is the fact that you do not have to keep up with, with anyone around you. You are content with what you have. You are content with your job. You are content with everything. Because you know one day, it's not going to matter. Listen, you know one day, this stuff is not even going to matter. All the people that talked about you, all the people that left you, all the people that broke your heart, all the people that bullied you, teased you, joned on you, all the people that teased your job, teased you because you didn't have enough money, teased you because you didn't look as beautiful or as handsome, all of this stuff is going to pass away sooner for others. You don't know the day that Yah is going to call you home. Yah can call you home in the middle of you seeking him out, or he can call you home in the middle of your turn up. 
Y'all can call you home in the middle of you loving your family, loving your wife, loving your husband, or he can call you home in somebody else's bed fornicating in a hotel somewhere. Y'all ain't, yeah, I can see. Y y y you, 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 don't, you, you, you don't know how much time you have left. Okay, let me help you. Uh, verse 22, Sirach chapter 30, verse 22. Happiness makes for a long life and makes it worth living. Okay? But your happiness will only be because you live a life full in Yah. See, without Yah, there is no happiness. There's no joy. Happiness is different from joy, though. Happiness is really, honestly... Happiness is mostly contingent upon circumstances. So if times are good, so if times are good, then you're happy. If times are bad, you're not. But even the scripture says, be happy though. When times are good, be happy. Even the scripture says, when times are good, be happy. But when times are bad, consider he's made one as well as the other. Therefore, a man cannot discover anything about his future, which means that, okay, if you are truly in Yah, you're going to be happy during the good times and you're going to be happy during the bad times. In other words, you're going to take the bitter with the sweet because you know Yah creates both of them. See? Verse 23, enjoy yourself and be happy. Don't worry all the time. Be anxious for nothing, but pray about everything. See, with supplication and thanksgiving, make your requests be made known to Elohim. Make your, if you, if something's bothering you, if something's ailing you, if you are confused about something, pray about it. If something, if you're fearful of something, if you're depressed about something or you feel yourself getting depressed, pray about it. But don't worry. Don't worry about your health. Don't worry about your bills. Don't worry about your job. Don't worry about your money. Don't worry about your children. Don't worry. Don't worry about this stuff. Pray about it. Pray about it. What's worrying going to get you? Nothing. Okay. Here it is. Here it is. And let me go here. Worrying, worrying is, is a door opening. Worrying creates a door for Satan to come in. That's what worrying does. Why? Because worrying causes you to not worship. See, the opposite of worrying is worship. You can't worship because you're worrying. Worship brings about our Heavenly Father. Worshiping Him brings Him about. It brings His presence. See, it brings, you feel His comforting hand when you worship. When you're worrying, it brings Satan. It brings Him. Because the only thing Satan's looking to do is to exacerbate your worrying. <laughs> you get it? You cannot add a single hour to your life by worrying. Don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow has enough of its own. It has enough worrying of its own to let tomorrow worry about itself for tomorrow has enough trouble of its own. Don't worry what you worry about tomorrow for. Tomorrow has enough trouble of its own. So let tomorrow worry about tomorrow. What you worrying about tomorrow for? You may not even be here tomorrow. What you worrying about tomorrow may not ever happen. People are worrying about the wrong things. Verse 23, enjoy yourself and be happy. Don't worry all the time. Worry never did anybody any good and it has destroyed many people. Worrying has destroyed many people. Worrying. You know why worrying has destroyed many people? Because people act off an of impulse when they worry. 
People engage in destructive behaviors when they worry. People begin to sin and do things in opposition to our Heavenly Father because they're worrying. People rush through life because they're worrying. People bring about their own destruction because they're worrying. Why? Because they made decisions in a split second that altered their reality. See, they made a temporary, they made a temporary decision, but created lifelong pain. Lifelong circumstances because they decided that they would make a critical decision. That was only temporary. A critical decision that cost them a lifetime. See? Made a temporary, made, made a temporary quick decision that altered their future. That created a lifetime worth of pain. All because they couldn't wait. All because they were worrying. See, they were worrying so much till they did something that led them to the penitentiary. They were worrying so much till they made a quick decision. They made a quick decision that created health problems for them. See? Verse 23, enjoy yourself and be happy. Don't worry all the time. Worry never did anybody any good and it has destroyed many people. Worrying. Verse 24, it will make you old before your time. Make you old before your time. All of these aches and pains and your vital organs are breaking down on you. You can't get up out of the bed. You can't lift any weights, do sit-ups, push-ups, pull-ups. You can't do nothing. You're old. You're old before your time. Why? Why are you old before your time? Because you did not understand that your spiritual health was crucial and imperative to how you operate physically. Okay, let me help you. Being saved makes you look good. The reason why now this man, you look like you man, you man, you look like you did in high school. Being saved, man. <laughs> no stressing, not a whole lot of stressing, whole lot of worrying and stressing, a whole lot of destructive behavior. Now I'm not saying that we didn't push the envelope, and I'm not saying that there weren't times that y'all had to pull us out of our foolishness, but for the most part, you did not. Live a life of constant destruction at every corner and every turn. And even if you did destroy your life and you messed your health up and you messed the way you look and you messed the way you look up. Don't you know that when you get into our Heavenly Father once and for all, he can change all of that. Now you start to have a glow about you. When at first you were looking broke down, busted and disgusted, you look dark, you look demonic, you look gloomy, you look tired, you look dead. But then y'all restored you and now you're glowing, your skin's glowing, you look good, you're vibrant, you understand, you're upbeat. Now what is that? That was life. Y'all gave you life when you were dead. You were dead spiritually. You received Yahushua Mashiach and he made you alive when you were dead. You, you get it? Now remember, can, now can I help you? What goes in must come out. Well, guess what? If you have the heavenly father in you, if you have the set apart in you, the set apart spirit is light. Well, guess what's going to show out? Guess what's going to reflect on the outside? Light. When they see you, you're going to be glowing. Why? It's because of what's inside of me. If you allow Yah's word to guide you, that means that your body will be full of light. Remember when the scripture said the eye is the lamp to the body. 
See, if your eyes are healthy, then your body will be full of light. Your, your body will be full of light. See? But if your eyes are unhealthy, then your body will be full of darkness. Now, if that light within a person is darkness, how great is that darkness? Don't you know that some people are full of light, but that light is darkness? In other words, people are operating off of darkness, but they have been deceived to think it's light. Well, wait a minute. If these people are deceived into thinking that darkness is light, how great is that darkness? How great can, how dark can these people be for them to actually believe that that darkness is light? See, so the eye is the lamp to the body. If your eyes are healthy, your body will be full of light. If your eyes are unhealthy, your body will be full of darkness. And if that light within the person is darkness, then how great is that darkness? See, you need to watch what you look at. Remember, we back to that again. The reason why your eyes are unhealthy is because you keep your eyes feasted on the wrong things. So that's the reason why your body's full of darkness. Satan, and that's the reason why the scripture says, for no wonder, Satan masquerades himself as an angel of light. He masquerades, with meaning when Satan shows up, if you don't have true light, you won't be able to see that Satan is dark. You'll think he's light. And that's how he's deceiving the whole world. Because when they look at him and they look at his things, they look at his devices, all they see is light. And so people have convinced themselves because they are under deception that what they're looking at is light. But that's because Satan came masqueraded as an angel of light. And because you dark, you can't see that Satan ain't light. You can't see he's dark. You get what I'm saying? And so people walk around with this grandiose attitude, thinking they hot cakes, thinking they all that, thinking they bosses, thinking they this and that, thinking they living their best lives, thinking they on top of their game, thinking everybody owes them something, thinking the world revolves around them. Think, come on. And they don't even know they going to hell in a handbasket because they dark and they spiritually dead. But Satan has deceived them into thinking. That they are actually walking in light, walking in the truth. And that's what makes these fraternities and sororities so dangerous. That's what makes them why. Because the goal, see, Satan's goal was to get you in these organizations to make you think that they were giving you light. But the moment you bind the oath, the moment you made the agreement, the moment you pledge, Satan blinded you at the moment of the pledge, the oath and the agreement. So now you walking in life, you walking in accordance to the ways of this world, thinking you full of light when in reality you full of you're full of darkness. But you can't. But no one can convince you at that point that you're walking in darkness because you have already been blinded. You get what I'm saying? These fraternities and sororities blind people because they've already made the covenant, the oath and the agreement to Satan and Satan blinded them at the initial pledge. So they walk around thinking they walking in light. They walk around thinking they are experiencing life. Whole time, they think they are, whole time they think they are experiencing life. Whole time they think they're walking in truth. Whole time they think they are walking in light. The one thing, the one thing that they are disconnected from, and that's Yah's word. <laughs> Come on. How you going to not be deceived and you don't know Yah? How are you not going to be deceived and you don't know his word? How are you not going to be deceived and you don't study, you don't pray, you don't turn down? How are you not deceived? But you can't tell these people that. Do y'all understand what I'm trying to tell you? Okay, I'm almost done. Right here. Verse 24. Worrying. It will make you old before your time. Jealousy and anger will shorten your life. There it is. 
Jealousy and anger will shorten your life. Not only will it shorten your years on this earth, it will shorten the productivity of your life. Why do you think people can't be productive and they can't progress? Because they're steadily looking at somebody else's achievements and success. They're jealous and they're angry. You need to find what Yah has blessed you with. But you're so busy looking at someone else's life, you can't even max out your life in Yah. And that has created jealousy and anger and envy in you. And so jealousy and anger has shortened your life. It has shortened your life. It has shortened your journey. It has shortened your creativity. Don't you know that jealousy and anger shortens your praise? You can't even praise y'all. You can't worship him. You can't praise him. You can't obey him. Why? Because you're so jealous. You're jealous and you're angry. And don't you know jealousy and anger? Don't you know that that keeps you chasing the world? Because you're jealous. So when you're jealous, you got to keep chasing the world. Why? Because you like you had a crabs in the bucket mentality that you got to be on top first. That you got to beat someone up the ladder, up corporate America. You got to beat them to the top. You're jealous of them. So you always steadily up one up in somebody because you're never comfortable and you are never content with where you are. Why? You jealous. When you're jealous, you can't be content with where you are. And then when you're jealous, you get angry. You get angry because you start counting and calculating people's steps and you start calculating, you start counting and calculating people's pockets counting and calculating people's achievements. And now, you're, and now you're angry. Meanwhile, your life has been shortened. Your lifespan and your life, meaning you maximizing your life, you being productive in your life, you being progressive in your life has been shortened. When you do, listen, when you don't even realize that life has never been about you. Life is all about glorifying our Heavenly Father. But because you kept yourself in the center of your life all the time, you never got an opportunity to come outside of your life long enough to see that life was never about you. Satan held you in the middle of your life. And this is the reason why everybody attacked you. It was always about what someone was saying about you. Always about someone breaking your heart. It's always about someone gaslighting you. It's all about someone slandering you. It's all about someone throwing you under the bus. It's always about somebody closing the doors of opportunity in front of you. Well, you know why? Because you're selfish and you're self-centered and you think life is all about you. And this is the reason why Satan always attacks you. So you never got an opportunity to come outside of your life long enough to say, wait a minute, like this ain't even about me. This ain't even about me. This ain't got nothing to do with me. It's all about glorifying our father in heaven. It's all about him getting the glory out of my life. It's all about him using me up. Filling me up. Leading me. Guiding me. Directing me. Ordering my steps. Don't you know that the scripture says man plans his course, but Yah determines his steps? Proverbs chapter 16, verses 9. Let me say that again. Man plans his course, but Yah determines his steps. Proverbs 19, 21. Man makes many plans, but only Yahweh's purpose will prevail. The problem is, is but you don't have that understanding because you don't know his word and you don't know his word causes you to live a lifetime worth of pain, chasing coping mechanisms to hide the pain, to get rid of the pain. But instead, you create more pain, create more trauma, create more darkness, bring more demons. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. And therefore, your health is not wealth to you. That's what your problem is. You have to learn 
how to enjoy your own company. You and Yah. You have to learn how to do that. You have to learn how to be content, satisfied with where Yah has you. Because on judgment day, he's going to judge you. See? It's going to be about him dealing with you. He's not going to judge you on the account of someone else. He's not going to judge you based on someone else's actions. He's going to judge you on you. And you're not going to be able to make excuses and say it was them. Stop. No, you. So you need to learn now how to get you in alignment with what y'all says about your life. What y'all wants you to do for him. Stop looking at everybody else. Everybody else has the, everyone else has their own judgment coming. And then the people that you are looking to compare your life to don't know y'all and y'all doesn't know them. These people don't have the calling that y'all has placed upon your life. These people don't have the anointment that y'all has placed upon your life. You can't do what they do, but yet they can't do what you do. <laughs> They're walking in lies. They're walking in darkness. You're walking in truth and walking in light. The two don't even compare. The two don't even mix. The problem is you hadn't learned yet to come out from among them and be ye separate. You still trying to walk with fornicators, adulterers. You still trying to walk with liars and cheaters. You still trying to walk with those who hate Yah. You still trying to walk with those who love the world. And that's the reason why you are dealing with a spiritual sickness. That's why. And every year, you look for a holiday to come around to make you feel good about life. Oh, you know, I can't wait till Christmas. And when Christmas come, I'm going to get me something for Christmas. And the Santa Claus going to grab my... Shut up. That's the problem with people. You looking for days and seasons and months and years to make you feel better about your life when they making you feel worse. Because you have made these things your idols. So you always waiting for another milestone, another holiday, another tradition, another celebration, another party, another cookout. You always looking for something. You thirsty. You always looking for some sex, looking for a blowjob, looking for some money. You always looking for somebody to affirm you. You looking for the praises of the world. And that's what's leaving you drained. Be okay with you and Yah. When you are content and okay with where Yah has you, it, it, it makes you more equipped to be able to work for him. And not care about what people say about you and what they do to you or what they going to do to you and what they have. You ain't got time to look at what they have. You too busy doing y'all's work. Why they doing Satan's work? See? But you are so selfish, you can't even see that you chasing the world. That's how selfish y'all are. You think it's so much about you till you can't even see that you are chasing a world of Satanism because Satan does not care about you thinking you doing you. He knows you doing him. He knows you not doing you. He knows that everything you doing, calling it you doing you is doing what he wants you to do because Satan's goal and job is to make you so distracted, get you so distracted and so boggled down with life. And get you so self-centered till you look up and you would not have given your life to the only one that truly matters. 
And guess what? Now you're getting ready to see him. But you ain't ready. You ain't even ready to see him. You ain't ready. Why do you think people care more about this life? Why do you think people, why do you think people are afraid of death? Let me help y'all. Why do you think people fear death? Why do you think people don't want to talk about demons? You want me to tell you why? Because they don't know y'all. They don't know y'all. See, this type of talk makes people uncomfortable when you start talking about the word and talking about the heavenly father and talking about heaven and hell. And when you start talking about coming out of sin and repent, people get scared. People don't want to talk about it. You know why? They love their lives too much. They don't want anything to mess up their worldview. They don't want anybody to mess up. They don't want anyone, anything, anybody to mess up their American dream mindset. They don't want anyone to mess up their life of having a best life and vacations and they don't want anyone to mess up their view of finally getting to live like the stars. But you don't even know you're getting ready to live like one of Satan's fallen stars, the fallen angels. That's what you're getting ready to be living like. Do y'all understand where I'm going with this? And so people think it's fun and games. People think it's funny. People think it's a game. People come on and they mock y'all. They talk about them. See, all these people that like to come on and, and, and I'm Satan and I'm Lucifer. Okay, I tell you what, you're not going to be saying that when you burning in hell forever. You ain't going to be saying that then. You ain't going to be saying that then. See, it's a game now because all you know is life. It's a game now because all you know is breathing. It's a game now because all you know is getting up every morning and doing what you want to do. Or you ain't seen death yet. You ain't seen the other side where there is no escape. You can't hide. You can't run. No repentance. No forgive me. No, I didn't know. No, you can't say it on the other side. So let people claim Lucifer and Satan and let people come on and say what they want to say. But oh, a time is coming. Where they will not be able to go back and change and redo. <laughs> and there is no makeovers, no redo overs. We can't do over. Come, let me help y'all. Ain't no doing over. Ain't no going back. Ain't no give me one more chance. So let them come on and say what they're going to say. Don't you know that this is a time of deception? Your health is wealth. Your health, spiritual health. Oh, let me go here. Let me go here before I'm done. Okay. Here we go. Verse 24, Sirach chapter 30 verses 24, because I want to go somewhere else before I go. Uh, verse 24, it will make you old. It will make worrying, worrying. It will make you old before your time. Jealousy and anger will shorten your life. Yeah, jealousy and anger will shorten your life. Verse 25, a cheerful person with a good attitude will have a good appetite and enjoy his food. Y'all, let me tell you something. I enjoy my food every day. I sleep. I, I don't know about y'all. I get good sleep. Even sometimes when I stay up late and I, I sleep good. I sleep good and I eat good. Meaning I enjoy my food and I enjoy my sleep. Yep. Come on. I don't care nothing about what the world is doing. I care nothing about what people doing and what they have and how they got what they have. I do not care. It does not concern me. And that's what makes me joyful. And that's what makes me content with where I am because I'm not measuring success by what the world says I need to have in order for me to be successful. I'm in Yah. I'm already successful. I'm in Yah. I'm already wealthy. I ain't looking to get wealthy. I'm not looking to be good. I'm, I'm already good. I'm not looking to get better. I'm already better. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. I'm not looking for the truth. I'm already walking in truth. I'm not trying to win. I've already won. You see the difference? See the difference? This world makes you think you got to always win something. So then you always are on a quest to try to win. But losing the whole time, you are looking to win. You losing and you'll never be a winner. 
Meanwhile, those of us walking in the heavenly father, walking at his pace, being able to wait and be patient for what he's going to release on our lives. We just as content. We already have the victory because of what Yahushua HaMashiach did at the stake on Calvary. He already purchased us with his precious blood. Taking the sins of mankind, past, present, and future. He took our transgressions and iniquities, right? So we already got the victory over Satan, sin, and death. We got the victory. So I ain't trying to win. I won. Y'all bet all oh, y'all. If, if y'all could get this message, this will bless you. <laughs> I won already. I ain't trying to get wealthy. I'm already wealthy. I'm wealthy already. Don't you know? That the talents and the gifts that Yah has given you, don't you know that you're wealthy already? Let me help you. Do not Do you know the wealthiest place on this earth? The wealthiest place on this earth is the graveyard. The graveyard has more riches, more money than those who are living. You know why? Look at all of the wasted talent that are in the grave. Look at the wasted. Yeah, that's right. The cemetery is the wealthiest place. Look at how many people died before maximizing their gifts and talents for Yah. Look at how many people deceased. Look at how many people died before they ever acknowledged and recognized who they were in Yah. I mean, if we have to, if we have to start counting dollars. If we want to measure wealth by money, well, the cemetery is the wealthiest place. Because don't think that you can't be wealthy and be in Yah. It's just that most people don't have the discipline enough to be wealthy, have material riches and, and still stay with Yah. Let me help you. The wisest man on earth, the wisest man in the world at the time, King Solomon didn't even get that part. He was the wealthiest man, the wisest and the wealthiest, and he allowed his wealth to supersede his wisdom. You get that? See, so most people are not disciplined enough to be able to handle material riches without being in opposition to Yah. See? And that's the reason why the wealthier you are, especially with material blessings, you have to stay just that much more closer to Yah. Because you realize that wealth has a spirit to it. That if you don't have the set apart spirit and filled up with the set apart spirit, you will allow the spirit of the world, the spirit of money or the spirit that's on money to take you and move you and push you and detach you away from Yah. See, but don't think, no, Yah can prosper you. You can be wealthy in Yah. You can be wealthy in him. It's just that most people, most people don't have the discipline enough to stay connected to Yah when they, when, when Yah gives them the wealth. And that's the reason why he makes it clear that no one can serve two masters. Either he'll hate the one and love the other. Or else he'll hold the one and despise the other. You cannot serve Elohim in money. See? Matthew chapter 6 verses 24. Okay? Now, let me go on. First Timothy. Let's go to First Timothy right quick. First Timothy four. Mm -hmm. See, you can't worship two masters. Money is a God. If you allow it to be. You can't worship and serve money and serve our Heavenly Father at the same time. And that right there becomes the disconnect in most people's lives. Why? Because they so attached to the money. 
their alliance is to the money. Their worship is to the money. So they can't worship our Heavenly Father because they worship money too much. Not only do they worship money, but they worship the things that money can purchase. They worship the things that money can buy. So they don't have enough room to serve Yah and honor him. So money has become people's gods. Money has become people's Elohim. And that's why most people don't, can't serve Yah. Why? Because they're chasing money. They rely and trust the money way more than our Heavenly Father. They, as a matter of fact, when it comes to money, ain't no Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father? Who? Heavenly who? In heaven? Ain't no heaven. Ain't no heaven. Ain't no spirit. There ain't no Heavenly Father. There ain't no Savior. Why? Because money. They got the money there and money can get them anything that they're looking for. So because money can purchase people their sin. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Money purchases people their coping mechanisms that turn up in their entertainment and everything that makes them feel good in their luxury. So then money becomes people's God because money can get people their sin. Mm. All right. First Timothy. First Timothy chapter four, verses eight. Listen to this. For physical training is of some value. Physical training. Is of some value. That's why I say it's even there. You know, it's, if it's in scripture, physical training is of some value, meaning that you need to get yourself moving physically, exercise, right? But holiness, Elohimliness has value for all things. See, that's your spiritual health right there. Physical training, that's your physical health, but then you have your spiritual health. So it says, see, but holiness. Elohimliness has value for all things. Why? Because if you're not spiritually healthy, then you're going to be deficient in every other area of your life if you're not spiritually healthy. Most people can't get their lives together, together physically because they are not spiritually healthy. But remember, Satan has created a culture to make people think that they are healthy when they're really sick. <laughs> okay, let me keep going. So, Verse eight, for physical training is of some value, but holiness, Elohimliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Y'all hear that? The value that holiness has is for here and for the next life. Hallelujah. Health is wealth. Health is wealth. Health is wealth. Your spiritual health. Your spiritual health comes before any other component or aspect of your health. Spiritual health comes first. Without that, you have nothing else. Spiritual health, mental health, emotional health, and financial health too. Financial health. You want me to tell you why? Because you can be spending your money on all the wrong things. You can spend money on things that serve your physical sickness, that serve your spiritual sickness. People squandering their money. And they're using their money to purchase everything that's causing their affliction or worsening their affliction. Financial health is everything, too. Because don't you know that one of the ways that y'all test people is what is how they use money? Y'all test people with money. How do you use your money? What do you spend your money on? Do you serve money or do you use money to serve you? To serve the kingdom? What to see? So people are creating their own detriment and their own disasters, self-inflicted wounds because they are utilizing money the wrong way. They're using money to their detriment, spending money to their destruction, to their demise. Don't you know that the scripture says that a fool and his money will soon depart? A fool and his money will soon depart, meaning that a fool with money, the money will be departed from him because he don't know how to use it. And everything that money has served a fool would have been used to deplore him, 
used to destroy him, used to distract him, used to demonize him and darken him. And so the fool and the, his money will soon depart. You have a fool with money or will soon give it some time and they'll be disconnected from one another. <laughs> you get it? So this right here is all of what I said tonight is critical to your spiritual health. Health is wealth. Health is wealth. Spiritually, mentally, emotionally. Come on, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, socially, socially. How you talk to people? Can you hold a decent conversation with people? Or oh, it's always Joe and Young and bro and bruh and N word, B word, F word, S word. Does your vocabulary only entail profane and curse words? Do you understand? See, but your spiritual health leaks right on down to all the other aspects of your health. See, if you read y'all's word, you start talking like them. See, you talk like what you read. You talk like what you listen to. You talk like what you consume and ingest. The reason why you talk like the world is because you always watch the world. You listen to the world. <laughs> That's why you talk like them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For physical training is of some value. First Peter chapter four, verses eight. For physical training is of some value, but holiness, Eloheimliness has value for all things. See, holiness, your spiritual health, has value for your mental health, emotional health, physical health, social health, financial health, right? But then not only that, holiness and Eloheimliness not only does it have value for all things, but it has value for now in this carnal natural world, but for the world to come. Meaning that your righteousness and holiness and y'all's going to come with you. Your physical things are not. But even physical training for this life is worth some value. Why? Because you can be a living, healthy, strong vessel for y'all to operate through. See, y'all wants your best years. He wants your strong years. Y'all wants you when you can still run, when you can still walk, when you can still talk, when you can still remember things, when you can still talk fast and you can be creative. He wants you then. He don't want you when you're busted and broken. I mean, he'll still take you, but he don't want you when you're broken and used up and busted and disgusted and all that because then you're going to have to serve him then. And he's going to keep you right here till he gets all out of you what he really wanted to get out of you when you were young and able and strong and you were a workhorse and you see... Now you got to live in affliction and give y'all your life then. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Health is wealth. You know, drink. I'm going to do a part two to this because I want to get into some things you could do here. You know, but drink, drink your ginger, get you some ginger and some lemon, drink that, get you some sour sop, get you some beet juice, get you some things that will help you help blood flow, help blood flow to the brain, blood flow to your vital organs, especially your heart. See, stop eating all of these artery or arterial wall clogging foods. That's what your problem is. Blood flow ain't right. And so the blood flow to your brain is slow. And that's why you can't think, you can't talk, you're mad, angry, sad, depressed, miserable. That's why. Your blood flow has been hindered. Blood flow. That's what you need. You need to, you need to drink and eat things that dilate the blood vessels so blood can flow. You understand that? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Father. Health is wealth. Remember that. Health is wealth. Money is not wealth. Your degrees are not wealth. Your position and influence in this system is not wealth. How many people you know is not wealth. No, your health is wealth. But your spiritual health, your mental health, emotional health, physical health, social health, financial health. Notice financial health is last. Because <laughs> if you ain't got the spiritual health coming on down, ain't no need to talk about money. Money's last. Even relationships come before money. How you deal with people, your relationships, how you interact with people, love people, love your neighbor like you love yourself. Come on. How you converse with people, respond to people, react to people. How you cherish people, value people, relationships. Without healthy relationships, money don't mean nothing. Without a good, sound, strong, healthy mind, money don't mean nothing. You'll squander it. You'll lose it. You'll mess it up. You won't know what to do with it. If your emotional health is jacked up, you'll spend money based on your emotions. <laughs> you'll spend money on things that alter the way you feel about life. So every time you get mad, every time you get depressed, every, every time you get sad, you'll use money to go spend on pills and weed and alcohol and whatever it is to make you feel better. Because you ain't got enough sense to know that no, only y'all can make you feel better. So you'll be spending your money on things that will alter your emotional health. You already bad at the heart, already have a bad heart. You're already negative. And then you getting ready to buy more weed, more liquor, more pills. Are you serious? And you already have a mental problem as it is. You already have an emotional problem as it is. You already have physical problems as it is. You can't, you can, you can't run. You can't lift. You can't lift no weights. Can't do a push. Can't even do 10 push-ups. What's the matter with you? Men, you should be able to lift your body weight. Let, oh, so I ain't, gonna, I ain't even going to get into this. I ain't, I, I'm going I'm to do another teaching on this. Period. You should be, men, you should be able to lift your body weight. Let me help you. However much you weigh, you should be able to lift that. You should be able to bench press that. Yes. Seriously. You should be able to, that's pulling your own weight. You mean tell me you can't lift your own weight? Push-ups, that's your own weight. Pull-ups, that's your own weight. Bench pressing, your weight. That's you pulling your weight. See? You should be able to run. You should be able to say five sentences without losing your breath. See, I'm just saying, these are things that, that we must look at and look out for and consider. And then when you look at your life physically, your physical health, and then you start to look back on the way you respond and the way you act and the way you feel, you say, what day? No wonder why I feel like this. No wonder why I act like this and respond like this, because I don't feel good in my body. I don't feel good. I don't feel good because I don't eat good and drink good. But most of all, I don't feel good because I don't have a, a, a spiritual connection with Yah and his word, meaning that I don't feast on his word. I don't eat his word. See, man doesn't live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the father. So you ain't eating good no way, in no kind of way. You're not eating good spiritually and you're not eating good physically. You, you just all messed up. Hallelujah. 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 Stop paying attention to what people are doing. Stop being distracted by what people have and what they're doing and what they're saying and stop that. 
It's distracting you. You cannot optimize and maximize your potential and all the gifts and talents and skills that Yah has blessed you with because you're looking at someone else. Measuring your success by someone else. Measuring your achievements by someone else. Measuring your weaknesses and your strengths by someone else. And these people ain't even thinking about you. These, these people don't care about you. They ain't thinking about you. If anything, they looking to get rid of you. They looking to beat you. They looking to be above you. These people ain't thinking about you and you hear you thinking about them. They ain't thinking about you. They think about doing whatever it takes to make sure they are. And here you looking at them. And the reason why they only thinking about them being all right is because they worshiping and they working for Satan. And you paying attention to people that's working for Satan instead of paying attention to what Yah has for you and what he says in his word about you and what he says in his word about today, tomorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may what and you sit and you stay. And here's the thing. You still measuring people's success by what they drive. What kind of shoes they got on their feet? Where they work. Don't you know that people are living beyond their means? Don't you know that a hundred thousand, a hundred K a year? Call us. People are still struggling making a hundred K a year. Don't you know that? Why? Because people are living beyond their means. So that 100K is more like 50K. Because they got more going out. Come on, y'all better hear what I'm saying. They got more going out than they got coming in. So that 100K means nothing. 150K, and you jealous of what someone else makes on their job, but they got more bills than they got money. <laughs> See? Think about it. Yeah, they got the houses and the cars, but bills come with that. Bills are attached to that month, to that house, to them cars. Yeah, but they cars paid for and they got, yeah, but they still got, they still need insurance. They still got to pay for car insurance. They still need to put gas in the car. Yeah, they house paid for. Yeah, but they still got to pay property taxes. Come on, y'all. You a dead slave. And the more things you have, the more you are worried about keeping it. The more stuff you obtain, the more stuff you have, you are worrying more about keeping it. So people can never rest. Why? Because their, their achievements, their success, and their, and, and their material things permit them no sleep. That's why, they, that's why they're unhealthy. Do you understand that? Hallelujah. 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 Health is wealth. Spiritual health, mental health, emotional health, physical health, social health, financial health. There you go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Father, for an untimely word. Father, we thank you for everything you've done for us, for opening our eyes at such a time like now. We thank you for your power, your presence. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Oh, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We are so content with where we are right now and where you have us. We are excited. We are excited to see and experience what you are going to do next. We, are, we, we thank you, Father. Thank you for your revelation. Thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you. Just thank you for just being in control. Thank you, Father. For you being you. 
So much so that we do not have to worry about what man is doing. We don't have to worry about what the world is doing. We can focus on you. We can be led and guided and directed by you. So we thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you, Father, for protecting our homes, protecting our communities, protecting our bedside. We thank you for protecting our children, our family, our spouses. We just thank you for protecting us going to and from our destination and whatever transportation we took, whether it was a boat, plane, train, a bike, a car, or us just simply on foot. We just thank you for the privilege and the honor to still be here, to live at such a time where the truth is pervasive, and where we can, we can seek you out by any means. We can seek you out, whether it's by a physical book, social media, in the internet. You have given us all these avenues to seek you out so that we are left without excuse on Judgment Day. Father, thank you. We thank you for the Davis ministry family and the body of Mashiach. Father, I'd like to thank you for compelling hearts to, to sustain this ministry with their monetary efforts. Um, Father, we, we just ask that you would continue to bless them 160 and 30 fold. But not only thank you, Father, for compelling their hearts to give to this ministry, but also for their love and their prayers, their support, their encouragement. Father, we, we, we just thank you, Father. We thank you. We th and their fellowship. Their fellowship. They come on and they they come on week in and week out. And Father, that right there is enough there that they are receiving the word that we all receive revelation from you. We all receive something new each and every time, something empowering, something motivating, something life changing, something that causes us to see where we are in you. So, Father, we just thank you. We thank you. Father, we ask that you would continue to forgive us for our sins, past, present, and future, knowingly and unknowingly in our thoughts, our words, and most certainly our deeds. Father, we ask that you would, uh, that you would provide a hedge of protection over our families, our children, our spouses, but also your, 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 your end-time prophets, your end-time apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, those who are on the front line preaching your heavy word under social persecution and maybe even perhaps physical persecution. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We just thank you for, for taking us from where we were to where we are right now. We were on our way headed. We were headed on our way to hell, not even knowing it, not even, not, not even perceiving it. And now you have brought us to a place to where we can see how far we were away from you not knowing how far we were away. Now we see. Thank you, Father. So, Father, we thank you for what you have already done in our lives, for what you are currently, presently doing in our lives, and for what we know you will most certainly do in the future by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, if it is indeed in your will. It is in all of these blessings that we do ask in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, our personal Messiah and Savior, we pray, and we most certainly give you the highest, utmost praise, and we do gratefully say, Hallelujah. 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 Praise him. Praise him. Praise y'all. I mean, it, uh, I'm trying to tell you the weight, the weight of the world is lifted when you lift him up. When you lift him up, the weight of the world goes right on up. With you lifting him up. When you lift y'all up, the weight of the world is lifted up off you. Right along with you lifting him up. You don't have to care about what people are doing. Where they are in life. Why, why they are where they are and why you not there yet. You don't even get it all that. Because you know y'all has something different for you. You are moving at his pace, not the world's pace. You must realize that. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, you guys, I love you all. Tomorrow night, 8 p.m. live.
YouTube, the Davis Ministry, if it's in Yah's will. I love you all. I'll see you tomorrow. Endure to the end. Stay prayed up. Stay in the word. Stay motivated. Stay encouraged. Stay empowered in Yah. Stay in him. Stay in him. Stay in him. I love you all, all right? Thank you all for your, I mean, thank you all for your support monetarily. I mean, y'all don't know. Y'all don't know how much y'all helped the Davis ministry. Thank you for your love, your, your support, your encouragement, your prayers, your fellowship. Y'all don't know. That works. That helps. Because don't think that I'm, all, I'm always, I'm not always filled up with the set apart spirit, contrary to popular opinion and belief. There is no pastor always filled up with the spirit. Don't let people, don't let these, these leaders lie to you. Come on. It's impossible to be filled up every second of every day. You, cause you in this flesh. That means it's your responsibility to get filled up. You got to get filled up. Now you have the permanent indwelling of the set apart spirit. That's a permanent indwelling. But as far as you being filled up, oh no, you got to do that. You got to get filled up. You got to get filled up. You understand that? The reason why you have to continue to be filled up with the spirit and it's your responsibility is because you a leaky vessel because of this flesh. See? So you got to get filled up and you get filled up. How do you get filled up? How do you get filled up? His word. Y'all's word is what fills you up. Y'all's word fills you up. What keeps you filled up? Obedience. Obedience keeps you filled up. <laughs> You don't always obey. But the set apart spirit convicts you when you don't obey so you can get filled up. Oh, y'all. Yeah. 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 Obedience keeps you filled up. See? Y'all's word. Y'all's word gets you. Y'all's word fills you up, keeps you on fire. See, obedience to his word is what keeps you filled up. Obedience to the word. See, his word will fill you up, but you want to stay filled up. Obey the word. You get it? Y'all's word fills you up. You want to stay filled up. Obey. Problem is, because we in this flesh. And this flesh is weak. We don't always obey. There are little things that he told you to do and you didn't do because you got lazy and you, you know, you fell asleep and you didn't feel like it and all that. So you ain't going to be filled up all the time, but you did. But it's for you to get filled up. But that's why you had a set apart spirit, because a set apart spirit is a gauge to let you know up. Oh, up, oh, need to get filled up. That's how you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You guys, I love you all. That is it. If it's in y'all's will, I shall see you guys tomorrow night. Hey, I love you all. I love you all. I do. I do. I do. I thank you all. All right. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. Hallelujah. Bye-bye.